We thank God again this uh, week, and uh, God has given me a word again, just to encourage you, wherever you'll be at home, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this blessed word, for this anointed word. Holy Spirit, take over and speak to your people, in Jesus' name. Our message today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 133, verse 1 to 3. Psalms, chapter 133, verse 1 to 3. The word reads, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell, in, to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beards, even Aaron beards, that went down to the skirt of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life, forevermore. That is the reading of the word. How good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And we have been given there two examples. First, it is like the ointment that comes from above. It comes to the head of Aaron. Then it comes to the beards of Aaron. Then to the garment of Aaron. And finally to the hem of of his garment. Then there's another picture as the dew of heaven comes upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded blessing and life forevermore. So we see here two pictures of the anointing of God from above and the blessings of God that can flow into your life and into my life. It is one thing to dwell together. It is another thing to dwell together in unity. So when we dwell together in unity, God commands the blessing to flow into our lives where the blessing has been commanded. Shortly, I want to speak about the commanded blessing. Let's read 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 4 to 9. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 4 to 9. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according into the word of the Lord, for he went and he dwelt by the brook of Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and he bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came into him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon. And he dwelt there. Behold, I have commanded a widow, a widow woman, there to sustain thee. Amen. Now here we see the commanded blessing. This was the time when Elijah shut off the rains. And he said, for three and a half years, there'll be no rain. So he shut the range because people were not doing the commandments of God. But God looked upon his servant and he said, now, go and hide yourself at the brook. I have commanded ravens to bring you bread and the flesh that is meat. In the evenings and in the mornings, you receive the bread. 
So Elisha went by the brook and he was fed by the ravens and he drank from the brook. Then the famine was so fierce that the brook died, dried. Then God came again to Elijah and he said, now go this way. I have commanded the widow that will sustain you throughout this period. And there was Elijah met that widow and a miracle happened. I'm speaking about commanded blessing because the Bible has said in Psalms 133 that there is where I have commanded blessings and life forevermore. We must find a place where God will say this is the place where all the commanded blessing will come to this place. The ravens were always conveying the bread and meat to Elijah. Divinely commanded birds to a divinely appointed place for a divinely appointed man. Now, if it is a commanded blessing, the devil and the witches can do nothing about it. Because if something is commanded to come to you by God, there's nobody that can resist that commanded blessings. Then the brook dried, and Elijah was commanded by God. And God says, I have commanded a widow woman. I have commanded. That is, before Elijah reached that woman, that woman had already received a command that a man will come that you are going to sustain him. So Elijah found this widow. There was much struggle, yes. There was no much struggle as such, but the woman was about, was about to resist. But finally, he, she gave in, and a miracle happened, which sustained both Elijah and the woman. Commanded blessings are there in spiritual realm. They are looking for a pipe of unity to flow into our lives. These are commanded blessings. God has already released them. They are hovering in the spiritual realm. They want to be manifested in the physical realm. But the principle of God, he is looking for a pipe of unity for them to flow into your life and my life. I'm speaking about Psalms 133. Now, this Psalms 133, the principle there applies how good it is for brethren to dwell together. This can be a church unity. It can be a family unity. It can be welfare unity. It can be a ministry unity. It can be a community unity. It can be an organ organization unity. Where people dwell together. Then their God commands a blessing. Dwelling together in unity. There is the unit of purpose. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25 to 26. Unity of faith. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. And unity of fellowship. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. That is the principle that God uses for a people that are living together in unity. For example, the Tower of Babel. The Bible records these people were one. Their language was one. Their voice was one. And God looked from heaven and he said, because these people are one, whatever they have intended to do, it will be so. So God says, <coughs> excuse me, let's go and confuse them. This was a unity, yes. And God saw how strong this unity was. Their purpose, no man can resist. But only that, their unity was a rebellious unity against God. And they were scattered all over the earth. You are commanded blessings are already released in, in your life. But there are 
still in the spiritual realm. They are looking for the pipe of unity to flow through into your life. Amen. Ministry. The anointing is released. It is looking for a pipe of unity in whatever ministry to flow in the ministry. Church, the blessing and the anointing of the church is looking for the pipe of unity to flow into that church and into the believers. Family also, the commanded blessing for that family, for my family, for your family, these are commanded blessings that have already been released in the spiritual realm. They are looking for a pipe to come through. Now, churches, families, and the other uh, Christian uh, fellowships, even praise and worship teams in churches, the anointing may not flow. The blessing may not flow. Because the entire praise and worship team, they are not living in unity in that fellowship. And nothing can flow into their lives. But where there is strife, hatred, envy, don't expect the blessing and the anointing to flow. This is a very powerful principle for the blessing and the anointing of God to flow into our lives. So at a time like this, when we are all locked down, just like Elijah, he was told to go by the brook. Later was told to go to the widow. At a time like this, there are divinely appointed people that God has appointed to help you. The ravens were appointed. They were commanded. The woman widow was commanded but the greatest requirement is the pipe of unity through which the blessing will flow through to you either a church a family any organization any fellowship for it to receive the anointing of god for it to receive the blessings of god that unity must be practiced <sighs> The hem, we have read Psalms 133. Now let us read Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. I want now to speak about the hem. The hem. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 to 22. 20 to 22. The Bible reads, And behold, a woman which was dressed with an which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she said within herself if i may but touch his garment i shall be whole but jesus turned him him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort thy faith hath saved thee all. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Amen. That is the time the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, he had been suffering with this issue of blood. The Bible says he has tried many doctors, many physicians, but he, she was always growing worse. All the substance had gone. Then one day at a certain meeting where Jesus was, this woman spoke to herself and he said, if only I will touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And the woman went slowly behind Jesus without Jesus knowing he touched the hem of his garment and immediately power came out of Jesus and he entered that woman and the woman was healed. The hem of his garment and Jesus was wondering because he felt some power coming out and he asked 
the disciple, who has touched me? Peter, the frontline disciple, said, Master, there are so many people touching you, and you say, who has touched me? And Jesus insisted that someone has touched me because I have felt the power coming out of me. And then the woman came forth, and he said, it's I. And the woman, that Jesus says, you have been made whole. Your faith has made you whole. He touched the hem of the garment. Then Mark chapter 6 verse 56. Mark chapter 6 verse 56. We see again the hem. Mark chapter 6 verse 56. The Bible reads. And whithereever he entered into villages or cities or a country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. <laughs> now imagine here, the Bible says, in every village, in every city, in the country, as Jesus walking, people brought their sick people. And they say, if only they can touch the hem or the skirt or the border of your garment, they'll be made whole. And imagine, these people touched the hem of Jesus' garment and they were made whole. And this where Psalms 133 says, as the blessing or as the anointing, the oil, comes upon Aaron's head to the beards, then to the garment of Aaron, and finally to the hem of his garment. For there he has commanded blessing and life forevermore. There must be something important into this hem, whereby this woman touched and he, she was made whole. By these villagers, those people in the cities, they touched the hem of the garment of Jesus and they were made whole. The hem, where God says in Psalms 133, there is where I've commanded the blessing and life forevermore. We have to know what the hem is even in our time. Amen. So, Jesus had a garment that had a hem. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 27, we may not have the time to read the, those scriptures, but 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 27, that type of a garment was worn by the, by the prophet. Prophet Samuel had that garment that had a hem. 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 13 and 19, Elijah's garment had a hem. When you read 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 4 to 6, when Saul was looking for David, David had all the chance to go and kill King Saul. But when David saw the king was there asleep, he took his sword and he cut the hem of King Saul garment and he went with it. So the people of old were putting garments that had hems. Numbers chapter 15 verse 37 to 41. The children of Israel were to make tassels, these are the hems, on the corners of their garments with a blue thread in the tassels. Verse 40 of Numbers 15, the tassels reminded them to observe the commandments and to be holy before God. I want to show what the hem was at that time. These were the hems 
the priests and the high priest of old, they were putting. And Jesus also had put a cloth that had a hem. After they dressed in their ordinary attires, they put something like this. You see these things in the pictures. Amen. Now these were the hems. These were the hems. They are described in different languages. The skirt of his garment, the hem of his garment, or the border of his garment. Now, in Hebrews, the whole of this cloth that the priest put on, it is called a talit. It is called a talit. And these projections, they are called tassels. Now, these tassels, in our today language, they are called now hems, or the skirt of his garment. The skirt of his garment. So, after the high priest have dressed themselves, then they look for a religious cloth and they put them on. Now, when the woman say, if only I will touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And he approached Jesus from behind. And when he reached Jesus, the woman touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. As he touched that hem, the Bible says, the power of Jesus Christ went through him. It came to the hem, and the power entered this woman, and she was made whole immediately. That's what the hem is. And the Bible says, <coughs> As Jesus was walking the villages and the cities and the streets, he was told, let these sick people touch just the hem of your garment. And they see people, many people coming, touching the hem, wherever the hem was, sick people touching the hands. And as long as touch the hem, the Bible says they are made whole. This type of cloth with the hem was a religious cloth that the people of old, the priests of old, were wearing it. So, what is the hem or the skirt or the border of the garment that when we touch, we receive? Amen? The power flowed without Jesus releasing it. This is the issue, the woman with the issue of blood. Amen. So what is so powerful about this hem? That when you touch the hem, you receive. And the Psalms 133 has says, the anointing or the blessing from heaven comes upon Aaron. It goes through the bears. It comes to the garment of Aaron. And finally, it ends at the hem. Of his garment. The anointing of the blood, uh, the anointing and the blessing come upon Aaron. It comes to the bears of Aaron. Then it goes, it splashes all over the garment of Aaron. And finally, the blessing and the anointing rests at the hem of the garment. And there is where God has commanded blessing and life forevermore the anointing and the blessing the bible has says it rests at the hem of Aaron's garment so we have to know what this hem is in our life the hem was and is still today the hem is a point of contact, is a point of authority, is a point of compassion, is a point of the masses, is a point of grace, 
is the point of faith connection. It is the point of anointing. If this hem was so important during the Old Testament, even New Testament, even at Jesus' time himself, if it was so important and releasing the blessing and the anointing of people, even in the New Testament, does it apply to us today? Do we have hems? We are coming to that. Do we have hems today? Where we can touch and we can see the difference in life. We pastors of today in a bishop, we don't have such attires. We don't have such clothes that we put today. We put on our beautiful suits. We don't put any covering upon our suits. We don't have any uh, 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 crosses hanging around. So as it was in the Old Testament and New Testament, I want to give you a revelation what the hem is and to us Christian of this day where we can go and touch this hem and we can receive the anointing and the blessing we want. If it was so in the olden time, has God denied us the hems of this time? As it was in the physical realm, today we want to know in the spiritual realm what these hems are so that when we go and touch that hem, we will indeed receive our blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. So we should know the hem in the spiritual revelation. So what is this hem where the blessings rest? What is this hem where the anointing rests? So Psalms 133 gives us the position of unity for the blessing and the anointing to flow into your life. For the grace of the church, for the grace in the servant of God, for the grace of the ministry you are in, that you may have the flow of the blessing and the anointing of God. So I want to demonstrate that you may get this picture very clear in the name of Jesus Christ. If this is Aaron, the beards of Aaron, the garment of Aaron, and the hem of his garment. Psalms 133 does not speak literally about the beards of Aaron or the garment of Aaron. It just says, brothers, how good it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is speak of brothers and sisters in a community, in a fellowship, in a church who have taken their position with Aaron for the grace, the blessing, the anointing of God to flow into their lives. And this, you see, is the position where the blessing from God will flow even to the hem of his garment. Now we have to know, spiritually, who is Aaron that the Bible is speaking about? Who are the bears of Aaron? Who are the garments of Aaron? And who are the hems of the garment of Aaron? These are people that came together. Psalms 133 speaks of a people living together. It can be church, fellowship, choir, present worship, organization, family, any people that are living together for them to receive the blessings of God that is commanded to a people like those, then this has to take place in our lives. So the Bible says the anointing and the blessings of God, it has spoken about the dew of the mountains of Zion. Dew means blessings from God. So God releases the anointing. He releases the blessing from above. Anybody 
they are looking for Aaron. Now let's take an example of a church. So the grace of that church or the anointing that is released upon that church, it is looking for an Aaron. He is the one that gets the anointing or the blessing or the grace and then it flows even to the hem of his garment where now it dwells there. So the Bible says, the anointing and the blessings, the dew of heaven, come upon Aaron. Then from there, the Bible says, the anointing flows to the beards of Aaron. From the beards of Aaron, the anointing continues to flow to the garment of Aaron. From the garment of Aaron, it flows to the hem of his garment. Where now there he has said, he commanded the blessing. Amen. There is the end of the journey of the anointing. It has to find some place for it to be contained there. Now, when we take a church, who is Aaron in the church? Aaron in the church is the pastor that is leading the congregation. So any grace, any anointing that comes, it is looking for Aaron. If indeed he is the Aaron of God. Then when the anointing comes upon him, then it begins the journey. It flows now to the people that are in line, to the people that are in unity. If you are not in unity with Aaron, Let's say in your life, you are somehow like that. The anointing from Aaron will not come and divert to you and go. Never. You have to be in line, in unity with Aaron. For you to tap the grace, the blessing that goes through this system. So Aaron is the father of the house, the pastor. Or the founder of a certain fellowship or ministry. For a church, Aaron is the pastor there. So it flows unto him. From Aaron, the Bible says, it comes to the beards of Aaron. So we have to know who are the beards of Aaron in the church. You may say the beards of Aaron are the deacons. I say no. You may say the beards of Aaron are the leaders in the church. Maybe. But remember, they are beards. Beards signifies maturity. And this does not look for women or youth who have no beards. Beards are the mature people in the church that are connected to Aaron. Beards in the church are those believers that have caught the vision of Aaron. And they are running with that vision. They are connected to Aaron, just like bears are connected to the head of, of to the head uh, of Aaron. So bears they may not be deacons, bears may not be church leaders. Bears are mature believers in the church who have caught the vision of Aaron, and they are running with that vision to bring it to pass. Those are the first people that the anointing touches them from the head of Aaron. To the beds. Now there the oil continues to flow from the beds. In fact, it is more sure when you you have beds and you take a glass of milk. For sure, the beds will have patches of that milk. So the beds of Aaron are mature believers that are standing with Aaron to see the dreams of that fellowship, the dreams of that church come to pass. From the bear, the Bible says, it comes to the garment of Aaron. Who are the garments of Aaron in the church? All believers are garments of Aaron. They also receive the anointing or the blessing. Yet, the anointing is in transit. It is looking for a place where it will settle. 
And the Bible has said in Psalms 133, finally the anointing rests at the hem of the garment of Aaron. So here are the beds. You are letting, you are not getting the full blessing. It is like a river flowing. And where there are some holes there, little water stays there. But the river and the water continues until it gets settled somewhere. So, no matter whatever position you have here, whether you are the beards of Aaron or you are the garment of Aaron, the best place is to be here, to be the hem of the garment, to wait for the anointing, to wait for the blessing to settle in your life. If I am a beard of Aaron, I will stand in my position <coughs> as a beard of Aaron. <coughs> but because I know it is just in transit, I will serve as bears of Aaron, yet I will take a position to receive the anointing. For there is where the anointing will settle. There is where the blessing will settle. The question is, now, who are these Gahem believers? We have seen the bears of Aaron. We have seen the garment of Aaron. The question that remains is the hem of his garment, where the woman touched and he, she was made whole, where God says there is where the blessing and the anointing rest. What is the hem of his garment? Amen. What is this? The hem of his garment. Where Psalms 133 says the anointing settles there. The blessing settles there. Wait, what is this anointing? Amen. Hem where the anointing is. It is not enough for you to be the beards of Aaron. It is not enough for you to be just a garment, a member of the church. You should become also the hem of Aaron's garment. These are all believers in a church, but those are different position as you wait to receive the anointing. Remember, anything that is commanded, it has to rest on somebody. Elisha died with the anointing. Then one day, one person died, and they buried that man. And the body of that man touched the bones of Elijah. And that man came back to life. The anointing cannot touch down. It was there in Elijah bones, waiting for someone to take over. And the commanded blessing and the anointing of God cannot be buried. Cannot be buried. It is finding, it is searching for somebody in that setup, in that fellowship, for it to settle. Then that anointing, that blessing, is looking for a man or a woman in the church, in the family, in the ministry, on whom the anointing can rest and the blessing can rest. We see Peter. Peter had fished the whole night. Peter had fished the whole night. He caught nothing. Jesus comes in the morning and he say, give me your boat. And Peter gave the boat. And Jesus preached to the people. Later, Jesus wanted to do, to bless uh, 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 Peter want to pay back for using his boat. And he tells Peter, go on the right side. Go to the deep and throw your nets. But Peter says, Master, I have told the whole night and I've caught nothing. And, to, and now it is a day, daytime. Peter was a professional fisherman. But that day he caught nothing. But here comes the master. And Peter obeyed. And he went into the deep. And he threw his net. And there came multitude of fish. 
It was not that there was no fish in the sea. The fish was there. But that day, that night, I think the kingfish said, today we are going on the other side of the sea. And Peter toiled in vain. But the miracle happened. And it happened because Peter offered his boat to the Lord. And after the Lord had done his work, he rewarded Peter with a reward. I want to tell you this. If you become a hem, I will tell you finally what the hem is. If you become a hem, then you will see the blessings coming to you. These things that had evaded the net of Peter by the command of Jesus Christ, commanded blessing, by the command of Jesus Christ, these fish made a U-turn and they looked for the net of Peter. Commanded blessing. They looked for the net of Peter. How many of us today, we are chasing money, they are the man is running away from us. They are changing things in life. We don't see them. People are even rejecting you like the fish of Peter. When you become a ham, God will make a U-turn. And the money that will be, uh, the money that refused to come to you, you will find money is coming to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll find money is coming to you. The fish had refused. But at the command of Jesus, the fish was looking for the net of Peter. That's what a hem can be. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are chasing money. Yes, you are chasing that shilling. You cannot get it. But a time comes when God makes a U-turn of the things that you have been chasing in life. And you'll find without any struggle, they are looking for you. Because you have become a hem. That is one example with Peter. Things that rejected you, money that rejected you, people that rejected you, God will turn them around to look for you. Amen. Amen. When you become a hem. We see the quality of an ass. Jesus had a need, and the need was a cult of an ass. And Jesus sent his disciple and said, Take this route, there you will find a cult tied, and tie it and bring it to me. Whoever will say, Why are you doing this? Tell him. I have need for it. Tell him the Lord has need for it. Let me demonstrate again. Come here, my brother. This is the cult of an ass. Every day, this cult is tied. Every day, this cult is tied. Every day, the cult is tied. The cult, it can go as far as the rope will take him. Even if there are good grasses there, but the cult was tied with a rope, it cannot go. It sees good grass there, but it is limited. It is stagnated. There are good blessings there, but the ass will not reach them because it was tied. And Jesus saw in the spirit realm, and he sent his disciple, go and untie that ass, and bring it to me. Whoever asks why, tell him the Lord has need for it. Now, hear this. This cult represents a picture of limitation in life. It represents a picture of stagnation in life. And this, this uh, uh, us, when you read Matthew chapter 21, verse, five, verse 1 to 5, it was going to 
fulfill a prophecy, a prophecy of all the prophets who said, daughter of Zion, rejoice for your king is coming in a cult of an ass. And that day when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem on the cult of an ass, there were celebration. The cult of an ass was like you. You are limited in your life. You are stagnant in your life. But the good news is, God gave order. God gave a command. There was no negotiation for untying this us. For God, for Jesus said, whoever will say, why are you untying it? Say, the master has got need for it. Jesus knew there will be resistance for that us to be untied. But because the Lord had need for it, because the ass was going to fill a prophecy, it was a must that it has to be tied. And that's why Jesus said, whoever, whoever was guarding that ass, not even the owner, any man, including the owner, whoever says, why are you untying it, say the Lord has need for it. And on that day, the ass was set to his freedom. The ass was so needful for fulfilling the purpose of God. Now the question is, are you needful in the kingdom of God? Are you needful in the church? Does your pastor still need, need you? Remember, there was bondage. It was limitation. But because Jesus needed it, and he was not just needing it, it was going to fulfill a prophecy. Imagine that us was there many years, but today, that day, it was going to fulfill a prophecy, a long time prophecy. The thing is, gentlemen, if you are needful, like the us, you are deliverous, you are healing, you are blessing, is not for negotiation. If you are needful in the church, if you are needful in the kingdom of God, if you are needful in the present worship, if you are needful in the ministry, your deliverance, your blessing, nobody can negotiate. For Jesus says, whoever asks you why, ask him the Lord has need for it. And the earth was brought and Jesus went on the earth, riding on the earth. That's what a hem is. Jesus on your back. And Jesus is riding on you. In the work of God. In the work of the church. In the work of the kingdom. The commanded blessing will automatically reach you. The question you ask yourself is, how needful are you in the kingdom of God? How needful are you in the kingdom of God? Finally, Hannah. Hannah for many years was looking for a child, male child. Year after year, they go to Shiloh for prayers. But God, as if it was as if God never wanted to do anything. Then one day, Hannah had a revelation. And as they have prayed their normal prayers, Hannah goes back to the temple and he said, God, if you give me a male child, surely this child I will give it back to you. And God said, what? Yes, if you give me a male child, this child I'll give back to you. That very year the Bible says, Hannah got pregnant. Now imagine, many years Hannah was praying, but he was not getting anything. But when now he said, God, I will give you this son, God responded. You know why? God had a need. God had a need for a prophet. God had a need for a prophet. But no one was ready to offer his son or her son. The needs of God are not made by angels. The needs of God are made by men like you and me, the believers in the kingdom of God. Imagine, over many years, Hannah is crying for a baby, and God is relaxing. By the time he said, Lord, I'll give you my baby, 
And God said, my need has been met. And he got pregnant. And after giving a, a Samuel to God, Hannah got other children. The thing is, how needful are you before God? That he may release the blessing and the anointing. Needful people, needful people are the hands of the church. Needful people are the hands of the pastor. Needful people are the hands in the kingdom of God. And there is where now the anointing flows and the blessing flows. And nobody can stop it. Finally, one day I called this young baby, this young Sunday school. They came before the altar. And they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? They expect many things. Pilots, engineers. I want to tell you, only one child, Sunday school, rose his hand and said, I want to be a pastor. Only one in the multitude of those many, many, many Sunday school children. And that was the time, during Hannah time, God was needing a prophet to be in house because Ellie was going to be out. Now imagine one child out of many children, only one said, I want to be a pastor. And I marveled at that. Some engineer, pilots, and all that. But God at that time had a need of a prophet. And he was given that child. And he blessed that woman. Finally, I want to tell you, my brethren and my sisters, wherever you are at home, there are commanded blessings at a time like this. But they are looking for a people that are still needful in any community, needful in the church, needful in any ministry, needful in the kingdom. That is the principle that the commanded blessing and the anointing will flow by passing many believers in the church, by passing many people in the church to come to you because you are needful. I leave you with a question. Ask yourself, are you needful wherever you are? Think, are you needful in the church? Are you needful for your Aaron? Does your Aaron need you? Are you needful in the kingdom of God? Are you needful? The ass was needful. The child of Anna was needful. And they were blessed mightily. May the Lord bless you and take a position that you know surely the church needs me. The servant of God needs me in different aspects of the life. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are not limited to our blessing and the anointing because it is for us. Lord, I have given, O Father, and demonstrated the Psalms 133, the flow of the blessing and the flow of the anointing will settle at the hem of the garment. And I've told your people, the hands are the needful people in the churches, in the ministries, in the fellowship, in organization. There is where the anointing settles. There is where the blessing settles. Where God has commanded life forevermore and blessing in Jesus' name. Until we may meet next time, remain blessed and observe the commandments of God. Amen.